Hey boys and girls, my name is Matt Comer. I'm Knoxville, Tennessee's Dean of Fun, and today we are going to read a book titled, What Do Plants Need? And it's written by Deborah Castor. While I'm reading, you're going to see me moving my cursor like this, and that's going to be so that you can follow along if you would like to. So let's go ahead and begin. What Do Plants Need? By Deborah Castor. Pictures to think about. Look at this picture right here. What do you think about when you see that picture? I'm going to put my finger on my head, and that means I'm giving you time to think. So let's go ahead and think. Okay, so when I look at this picture, it makes me think about flowers or plants soaking up that sunlight that's coming from above. Because I can see the bottom of the flower, but I can see the sun looking down. It. So that's what that makes me think of. What about this picture right here. What does this picture make you think about? Well, when I look at this picture, it makes me think about maybe farming, because it looks like there's rows of plants, and also I see water being sprayed out, so maybe it makes me think about how plants need water. What about this last picture right here? What does this make you think about? This picture makes me think about the desert because I see cacti all around. If you see one, it's called a cactus, but if you have more than one cactus, it's called cacti. Can you say that? Cacti. Cool. What do plants need by Deborah Castor? Table of contents, words to think about on page two. Introduction will be on page four. Chapter 1, Plants Need Water, on page 6. Chapter 2, Plants Need Air and Light, on page 8. Chapter 3, Plants Need Space, on page 12. The conclusion is on page 14, and the glossary and index are on page 16. Isn't that cool how the table of contents tells you where everything is going to be in the book before you even read it? What? Let's go ahead and start reading. So now we're on pages two and three. If you look at the bottom, it tells you what page we're on. So on page two, it says words to think about. The first word is air. You cannot see air. You breathe air. <sighs> light. Plants get light from light bulbs and from the sun. That's right. Some plants get plant, uh, light from light bulbs like this one others from the sun. Plants. Many plants grow on earth. Look at all the different plants in these pictures. Do you know any of them? I see a cacti or a cactus here. I can't tell if it's more than one. I see another thing right here. So I don't know if I need to say cacti or cactus. I see tomato plants. I see a tree. I see a house plant. Space. Space is a place to grow. Sunlight. Sunlight is light that comes from the sun. Water. Plants can get water in many ways. Hmm. I wonder how plants can get water. Let's find out. So here we are on page four and page five. Introduction. Look outside. Do you see trees, grass, or flowers? The plants that you see are living things. All plants need water, air, light, and space to stay alive. How do you, or how do, sorry, these things help plants stay alive? Now, look at these pictures. Down here at the bottom, you'll see some words, and those are called captions. Captions tell you what's going on in the pictures. These plants are alive because they have the things they need. What do they need? This plant looks like it's getting water. And over here, uh, I'm going to assume maybe some space, some sunlight. What about um, some air? <sighs> Chapter 1. We're on pages 6 and 7. 
Plants need water. Water helps plants grow. Roots, stems, leaves, and flowers can grow when plants get water. What do you think will happen if a plant does not get water? Hmm. Let's look at this illustration right here. And in this picture, it is labeled so that you know the different parts of this plant. Up here it says flower, the stem, this says leaf, that's a leaf right here, and then roots down here at the bottom. I believe this flower is called a tulip. Now figure this out. This plant is inside a home. How can this plant get water? Let's think about that. Well, does it rain inside your home? Hopefully not. Maybe it gets water from a human, like me or you or mom and dad. Somebody's got to give this plant water. Now, these plants get water from the rain. Look at this dandelion over here getting all that water. Oh, yeah. Let's move along. Pages 8 and 9. Chapter 2. Plants need air and light. Did you know that plants make their own food? The food is sugar. Plants need air and light to make sugar. If a plant does not get light, then the plant cannot make food. Plants that grow outside get sunlight. Look at these plants. Do you notice that the flowers are kind of tilting toward the sun? If you notice that, well, then you're right. You're not going crazy, folks. That is really happening. Down here it says, these flowers grow toward the sunlight. Now here's kind of a cool experiment. If you have a plant at home that does have a flower or anything like that, um, a lot of times it will be curved toward the window. So do this. Turn the pot so the plant is facing away from the window. And then like in a day or two, look back at the plant again. It will move. It's so weird, but cool. Down here says cause and effect. Look for the words if and then. If helps us identify cause, then helps us identify an effect. Hmm. Like up here, it says if a plant does not get light, then the plant cannot make food. The cause is if the plant does not get light, and the effect is it can't make food. Let's move on to pages 10 and 11. Boop. Air and light get inside the plants through little holes. If a plant has leaves, then the holes are in the leaves. A cactus has holes in the stem. Now right here you see leaves. It says, these leaves have tiny holes. Hmm. I didn't know that air and light get inside the plant through tiny little holes in the leaves. Very cool. Plants need air and light. Living things use air. The air we breathe has oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen leaves the plant, and the carbon dioxide goes into the plant. So that means we need plants to live. Down here it says, plants use the carbon dioxide in the air to make sugar. And after making sugar, plants put oxygen back into the air. Plants and animals use the oxygen in the air to make energy to stay alive. They put carbon dioxide back into the air. So, without plants, humans and animals wouldn't exist. And without humans and animals, maybe plants wouldn't exist. We depend on each other, so let's treat each other kindly. On pages 12 and 13, we're on chapter 3, Plants Need Space. Plants need space or a place to grow. Some plants grow far away from other plants. Some plants grow close together. Farmers give plants just the right amount of space to grow. And down here it says, all these plants have space. Now, just like they said, some plants grow close together. Wow, those look kind of close. But look at these. Now, these look kind of close, but they also have rows of space in between them so that they can branch out, right? So you can have those nice leafy greens to eat at the dinner table. Now, if you've ever had a garden, here's a fun experiment to try. Try planting some plants really close together, and then try planting some plants 
far away from each other, and then as the season continues on, see which plants get bigger. Hmm, I wonder which ones would. That's for you to find out. Let's go ahead and move on to pages 14 and 15. We're at the conclusion. Plants are living things. Plants need water, air, light, and space. What do plants need? Water, air, light, space. Let's talk about these. Water. Plants need water to grow roots and stems, to grow leaves and flowers. Air. Plants need air to make food and to use food to stay alive. Plants need light to make food. Plants need space to get water, air, and sunlight. And plants also need space to grow. Now we're at the glossary. Remember, the glossary is going to have words that are in the book, and it will also give us the definition of those words, which means it will tell us what those words mean. For uh, one word that we read in the book was the word air. Um, air, gases that are around the earth. See page five. So that means if we go back to page five, they'll talk about air. Light, a form of energy that plants use to make food. See page five. Plants, living things that make their own food and stay in one place as they grow. See page four. Space. A place to grow. See page 5. Sunlight. Light from the sun. See page 9. Water. A liquid that plants need to live. See page 5. Down here we have the index. Now, if you are doing a research project and trying to find out information about a single topic, the index is the place to go because it tells you where to go in the book to find out information about that thing. For example, if you're trying to find information about air, you could go to pages 5, 8, 10 or 14 and it would tell you all about air here we have the word flower you can go to pages four or six food page eight leaves pages six and ten mm, if you want to find out about light you can go to pages five eight and fourteen plants pages four and twelve roots page six space pages five and twelve stems pages six and ten Sugar, page 8, sunlight, page 9, and water is on pages 5 and 14. Cool. All right. Well, we just learned all about plants. Um, I feel so much smarter just for reading this book. Now, let's do a little extra digging in real quick before we leave. This says, Meet George Washington Carver, born about 1864, died around January 5th, 1943. His birthplace was in Diamond Grove, Missouri. And what did he do? What did George Washington Carver do? Carver discovered that growing cotton year after year was bad for the soil. He helped farmers make soil healthy again. So how did he do it? Carver showed the farmers how growing other crops like peanuts and sweet potatoes could make the soil better. I didn't know that. So if you grow cotton year after year after year, the soil becomes not as good, which means you're not going to grow as much. So then he said, well, grow peanuts or sweet potatoes, and it will make your soil better. I had no idea. I'm going to have to try that in my home garden next year. Carver's Contribution We learned about George Washington Carver because he did hundreds of experiments to find new ways to use plants. He used peanuts to make more than 300 new products. What? George Washington Carver was a scientist. Cool. So maybe you can find out some more stuff about George Washington Carver after this book. All right, boys and girls. Well, I hope you had as much fun reading with me as I had with you. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.